Hi students, today we will discuss cystodes. I will be explaining this chapter in two sessions. So we will take up the general characteristics of cystodes. We will take up one by one. First we will uh, see the morphology of the adult worm. The cystodes are tape like uh, worms dors which are dorsoventrally flattened and uh, they are long and they are segmented. So and their measurement varies from a few millimeters to several meters. They usually reside in the small intestine and they have three parts that is the head which is called as the scolex, neck and the strobula. The strobula contains the proglottids. Okay. So these proglottids again can be uh, subdivided into uh, immature, mature and the gravid. Okay. So these worms are hermaphrodite that means to say both the sexes are there in the same uh, organism. So they are also called as monaceous and uh, they have a uh, excretory system and nervous system but the body cavity and respiratory system is absent which is seen in case of nematodes. Usually eggs are formed and stored in the uterus. The eggs of this pseudophilidian cystodes they are opercalated and non embryonated whereas eggs of the cyclophilidian cystodes they are double layered and embryonated the life cycle will be usually completed in two different host except for hymenal pisnana which requires only one host the definitive host is usually a man and he acquires the infection by eating the larva in the tissue of the intermediate host and man sometimes can act as an intermediate host rather than intermediate host i can call them as an accidental host okay or a dead end host uh, intermediate hosts are mammals fish or arthropods okay some of the, uh, the all the cystodes needs uh, one intermediate host except the diphyla bathrium which requires the two intermediate host and as we have already seen the no intermediate host is required for the amenolepis nana so we classify cystodes broadly into cyclophilidian cystodes and pseudophilidian cystodes. Under the cyclophilidian cystodes, we have family Tinidae, Hymenolepidae, and Diphyllidae. In the family Tinidae, we have genus Tinea, which has the Tinea solium, Tinea saginata, Tinea saginata asiatica, and Tinea mul multiceps. A genus Echinococcus, which has the Echinococcus granulosus, Echinococcus multilocularis, and uh, the Echinococcus ojeli. Okay, uh, family Hymenolepidae contains genus Hymenolepis and the species Hymenolepis nana and Hymenolepis diminuta and Diphyllidae contains uh, genus Diphyllidium and species Diphyllidium caninum. The Pseudophyllidian uh, order contains the family the Diphyllobothridae in which the genus Diphyllobothrium which has the species Diphyllobothrium latum genus Pyrometra contains the Spirometra mansoni, Thaleri and Erinus. So this Soldophilidian parasites can be uh, differentiated from Cyclophilidian parasites based on the, the some of the characteristic features. For example, head of the Soldophilidian parasites possesses uh, two slit like grooves on either side of the uh, that is the, on the ventral and the dorsal portion of the parasite whereas in cyclophilidian parasites uh, they possesses four suckers usually the uterus is convoluted and non-branched in case of pseudophilidian parasites whereas it is usually branched in case of cyclophilidian parasites uterine pore is present in case of pseudophilidian parasites whereas cyclophilidia it is absent common genital pore will be seen in the uh, mid ventral portion of the pseudophilidian parasite segments whereas it is seen in the lateral portion of the segments eggs are usually operculated and non embryonated whereas eggs of the cyclophilidian parasites are double layered and embryonated and embryo in case of pseudophilidian parasites is coracidium whereas in case of uh, cyclophilidian parasites is hexacanth embryo so so i have uh, put the pictures of the both pseudophilidian and cyclophilidian parasites for your reference let's take up the the pseudophilidian cystodes and that the diphyllobathrium lightum 
Diphyllobutram latum is the longest cystode found in the human intestine. It's also called as fish tape form. The meaning di means to, phylon means leaf like, and botrium means sucking organs. So it is having two leaf like sucking organs on the ventral and dorsal portion of the 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 uh, head of the worm. Okay. So the habitat is the small intestine of the man, either in case either the jejunum or ileum. So the adult worm is ivory colored and it measures more than 10 meters. It has head which is called as the scolex, neck and strobila. Head is an elongated structure and it is a spoon like uh, one and it has two long weak grooves or what is called as botrilla on the one on the ventral and the other on the dorsal portion of the parasite. It lacks the sucker and the hooklets which are seen in the other parasites. The neck is very thin, it is unsegmented and it is longer than the head. So you can see this is the 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 entire worm. Okay. So you can make out the the length of the worm, how much long it is. The strobila is the the body portion, the the last portion of the parasite. That this is the longest portion, and it consists of around three thousand to four thousand proglottids. So as I told, we can classify or divide subdivide these proglottids into immature, mature, and gravid segments. And the mature and the gravid segments measures up to two to four into ten to twelve millimeters uh, in uh, dimensions. So mature segments I it contains a bilobed ovary, okay, uh, in the rear end, and a, a central rosette-like uterus, okay. So and uh, three genital openings, one for vas deferens, one for vagina, and one for the uterus will be. C. Okay. Whereas in case of gravid segment, uh, usually it will be filled with the the eggs, and it expels the egg frequently. So generally, the adult worm live for five to thirteen years, and it produces one million eggs per day. So this is the structure. You can see the sucker and its unarmed uh, head. And also, uh, this is the uh, the the uh, mature segment which shows the the convoluted uterus, bilobed uh, ovary, and uh, so this is the the um, immature uh, uh, segment, or it so it's a mature segment with uh, which is uh, uh, stained, and this is the gravid segment which contains the operculated eggs. So the eggs are light brown in color. That means to say they are um, uh, bile stain. They are oval and measures around 70 to 45 micrometers in size. They have an inconspicuous operculum, which is difficult to make out. Okay, it's a lid-like structure. Operculum is nothing but a lid-like structure at one pole of the parasite, and it is a. The, and there is also a small knob-like projection at the other pole. Okay, so usually this is uh, these are seen in the freshly passed uh, egg. Uh, I mean uh, stools. Okay, so when the uh, eggs are released, they are not infective because, as I told, the pseudophilidian parasites are non-embryonated, so they have to undergo some developmental stages before they become infective. The infective form is nothing but the pleurosaurid larva. It's also called as the third stage larva, and it's also called as parganum. Okay, sparganum is asked as a, a three mask question most of the times. Okay, and uh, this is an unsegmented and a uh, tape like worm, it measures up uh, around 10 millimeters in length. It's not encysted and has partly invaginated scolex. Usually, this is found in the body cavity and muscles of the fish. So, life cycle. It's the only adult tape worm of man which has a life cycle in the water. This has to be remembered. And this is the only pseudophilidian cystode 
commonly called uses man as a definitive host and this is the only sysstore which requires two intermediate host so let's see what are the definite definite host man is one of the definite host other than man dogs cats fox bears wolves can also get uh, infected the intermediate host the first intermediate host is a freshwater copepods like uh, diptemus or cyclops and the uh, second intermediate host is a, a fish like pike river perch trout salmon or ruff so the infection is acquired when the humans eat a raw or undercooked fish which contains the pleurosaccharid larva okay so once he consumes the pleurosaccharid larva will be released in the intestine and the scolex evaginates and it attaches to the mucosa of the small intestine okay so it develops and sexually matures in 5 to 6 weeks and begins to uh, lay the eggs okay so these operculated eggs will be released in the stool and they mix with the fresh water okay so once they reach the fresh water they hatch in 9 to 12 days so the embryo has to form then it releases the uh, the embryo into the uh, water okay so it uh, releases the first stage larva what is called as coracidium this coracidium will be a, a ciliated structure with the three pairs of hooklets inside it this is ingested by the first intermediate host like cyclops and then <coughs> thereby the coracidium it penetrates the intestine of the cyclops and it develops into a prosarcoid larva in the body cavity of the cyclops when the cyclops are ingested by the the uh, fish fresh water fish the the prosarcoid larva will be liberated and it penetrates the intestinal wall and develops into pleurosarcoid larva in the muscles and viscera of the the uh, the fish okay so when these fish are consumed raw or undercooked the cycle gets repeated similarly the other definite host like dog cat mm, any wild animals can acquire the infection in a similar way okay so other than the uh, man the parasite can be maintained in the environment um, with the help of the other animals also the diphlebotrum latum infection is associated with uh, the malabsorption syndromes like pernicious anemia okay so adult worm is having an affinity towards the vitamin b12 and also because of the uh, the vague symptoms there may be a low dietary intake of vitamin b12 in developing countries like uh, us and also reduced secretion of the intrinsic factor may contribute to the the pernicious anemia associated with the diphlebotrum latum so most humans has a single parasite and they will be uh, um, asymptomatic and vague abdominal discomfort uh, vague symptoms like abdominal discomfort vomiting diarrhea weight loss etc can be there but uh, there may be some complications of vitamin b12 deficiency and uh, migration of the proglottids can cause uh, cholecystitis or cholangitis okay so usually man is a reservoir and other mammals can also act as reservoirs source is the infected fish which is having the pleurosaccharid larva or third stage larva okay so transmission is consumption of the raw smoked or lightly salted or insufficiently cooked fish okay so and also eating the liver of the fish the so parasitic diagnosis is going to establish the diagnosis of the infection usually the infection goes unnoticed because it lacks um, uh, any specific symptoms usually demonstration of the eggs in the feces by microscopy will be the uh, diagnosis and uh, uh, proglottids if they are passed in the stool they have to be observed for the uh, mm, proper diagnosis and also uh, there is a copro antigen test is available that is the detection of the the antigens of the parasite in the stool specimen either by elisa or other techniques mm -hmm. so we are going to treat it with the prasequantel or 
nickelose and nickelosamide and also we need to supplement the vitamin b12 which uh, has led to the pernicious anemia along with the suitable uh, other um, therapy for pernicious anemia okay and prevention is uh, thorough cooking of the fish or freezing at minus 10 degrees celsius for at least 24 to 48 hours so that the pleurocircoid larva is will be killed okay and avoidance of eating of the raw or undercooked fish preventing the contamination of the lake river reservoir with the human feces now we'll take up the cyclophrodian tapeworms so start with the family tinidae and um, um, so the family tinidae they are the they have the armed scolex armed scolex means they will be having the hooklets uterus is actually uh, it's having a longitudinal stem with the um, too many lateral branches and genital pores are present uh, laterally and they are alternating ir irregularly okay so testes are found numerously and adults are found in the intestine of the definitely host let's take up the the two different species of tinea one is tinea sarginata and tinea solium so let's go one by one we'll take up tinea sarginata so tinea sarginata is also known as the beef tape form okay because it is the infective form the larva uh, the resist circus bovis is present in the the cow okay so uh, that is why uh, uh, this is called as the beef tape form so this is the commonest large la, large tape worm uh, of the intestine and uh, the infection is acquired by orally by ingestion of the infected beef with cysticercus bovis larva generally the parasite resides in the upper jejunum and it attaches with the help of the sucker adult worm is white ribbon like flattened and the segmented worms measuring around 4 to 10 meters and it has head neck and the strobila head is actually uh, quadrate in shape and uh, uh, measures around 2 millimeters in diameter with uh, four cup shaped suckers and hooks are absent here okay so we can see the both tinea solium uh, tinea solium and tinea sarginata here you can see the four suckers which are uh, which does not have hooklets in case of tinea sarginata whereas here the four suckers are there and there will be hooklets uh, rosette with the uh, hooklets will be seen in case of tinea solium so neck is around uh, 3 to 7 millimeters long and uh, strobila it is around, it measures 4 to 10 meters long and it consists of a uh, chains of uh, 1000 to 2000 proglottids which are arranged as immature mature and gravid segments so gravid segments are opaque white and measures around 2 centimeters in length and 5 to 7 millimeters in breadth and each segment consists of numerous testes and bilobed ovary and sometimes uh, these uh, segments are passed in the stool okay so we'll just see the difference between the gravid segments i mean the mature segments of the tinea solium and tinea sarginata so i also repeat the same table in the uh, future slides okay so the tinea solium it contains around 375 to 475 testes in the each segment whereas tinea sarginata contains more number of testes that is 800 to 1200 testes okay so no vaginal sphincters in case of tinea solium whereas well developed vaginal sphincter is seen in case of tinea sarginata so tinea solium is having a trilobed ovary whereas the tinea sarginata is having the bilobed ovary uterus is around uh, it's branched around 7 to 12 branches okay whereas the uh, uterine branches will be 18 to 32 in case of the the tinea sarginata so remember tinea sarginata will be having more number of proglottids that is one thing so proglottids are larger in size and proglottids will be containing more number of testes more uh, it's, it's, it's having only bilobed ovary and the uterine branches will be more compared to tinea solium okay so this is a stained segment of the tinea solium and sarginata the eggs are round or oval and measures around 33 to 43 micrometers they are bile stained and uh, tinea solium echinococcus granulosus 
I mean Echinococcus genus Echinococcus, ten, the genus Tenia, ten, genus Multiceps, X cannot be differentiated. So the, this is one of the question which is asked in the viva voice. So can you name few uh, morphologically similar X? So you can explain Tenia's, Tenia, Echinococcus and Multiceps, they all produces the same types of X. So egg has two membranes that is the outer membrane which is called as egg, egg capsule and inner membrane which is called as embryo four. The embryo that is oncosphere it consists of the six hooklets okay so this is that is why it is called as the hexacanth embryo and eggs are infective for cattle but not for the humans. Infective form is Cysticercus bovis and the infective stage for humans is nothing but the Cysticercus bovis okay so so the uh, the cysticercus bovis is an oval 5 to 10 millimeters uh, diameter and it's a translucent cyst filled with the clear fluid it contains the op um, opaque invaginated uh, protoscolex and uh, the cysticerca can be found in any organ but most commonly found in the heart and muscle of the the beef so humans in, in are infected by uh, eating the undercooked beef and the the cysticercae so which are digested in the small intestine and the protoscolex evaginates and it attaches to the intestine and produces the segments and develop into adult worm by uh, two to three months okay so each segment will be containing around 50,000 to 80,000 eggs and uh, these eggs when released it is, will be consumed by the the, uh, the cows okay so once they consume the oncosphere inside the egg will be released in the intestine it penetrates the intestine reaches the muscles through the lymphatic circle lymphatic and the, the systemic circulation and the, the and they become the cysticercus bovis so the cysticercus bovis will be uh, viable up to two months or we can take eight weeks uh, i mean eight months sorry eight months okay So the pathogenesis includes the the adult worms, uh, which is non-pathogenic. Clinical manifestations usually the intestinal tenesis mostly goes unnoticed. Uh, sometimes the vague uh, symptoms can be presented, uh, which can be non-specific for a particular condition. And uh, some uh, if the proglottids uh, are a, uh, it comes through the uh, anus. So we can the person can feel a crawling sensation in the perineal area. The complications include intestinal obstruction, appendicitis, uh, pancreatitis, and uh, prognosis is 100% um, cure rate is there. So we can treat it uh, no problem. Okay. So when is the reservoir and uh, infected feces is the uh, 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 feces of the infected uh, human is the source of infection for the cow and transmission is by ingestion of the raw or insufficiently cooked uh, beef uh, harboring the cysticercus bovis and uh, also one thing is a tasting of the meat dishes during the cooking is also one of the reason of uh, way of transmission usually the symptoms goes unnoticed and uh, they are rarely diagnosed or uh, accidentally they can be diagnosed so parasitic diagnosis we are going to do the uh, the stool examination to look for the characteristics x of the cystodes so uh, usually eggs will be released intermittently and hence so we need to collect two to three specimens but uh, one of the disadvantage of the uh, stool examination with respect to this is so uh, so um, the most of this uh, cyclophrodial parasites are produces morphologically similar eggs. Um, we can demonstrate the macroscopic appearance of the parasite if we get the parasite. So we have to demonstrate the scolex and also uh, the the mature proglottids has to be seen. And uh, eggs we are going to do the thick fecal smear to demonstrate them sometimes cellophane and swab, uh, swab technique and acid fast staining if you do you can see the acid fast uh, nature of the parasite okay proglottids are uh, usually washed cleaned and placed between the two slides and examined with the uh, examined under the 
the dissection microscope uh, we had to find uh, how many branches of the uterus are seen and uh, how many branch uh, lobes of the ovaries are seen and all those things should be looked to uh, specifically identify the species uh, scolex definite identification of the species can be done okay so detection of the tinea antigens uh, <coughs> using the copra antigens and elisa can be done zero diagnosis using the indirect hemagglutination test or indirect fluorescent antibody test or elisa to demonstrate the uh, the antibodies of the uh, the tinea uh, against the tinea sagenator molecular diagnosis like dna probes and pcr can be done and treatment includes the praziquantel is a drug of choice and uh, it causes the loss of intracellular calcium and uh, massive contraction and paralysis of the parasite nicolosomid can also be used and uh, the after the and uh, 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 along with or after the uh, antiparasitic drug we had to uh, give some purgatives to expel the killed worm prevention is proper cooking of the meat or uh, i mean beef and or storing it uh, storing the beef at uh, minus 7 to minus 20 degrees celsius for 48 hours Inf inspection of the beef for cystic cirrhosis uh, improved general sanitation avoidance of contamination of water with the human feces and sewage so now we'll see the tinea solium this is called as the pork tape pork tape worm see we need to remember few common names of the parasites we need to know, both the we need to know the scientific name and the common names tinea solium is called as the pork tape worm this causes the intestinal tineasis and also cystic cirrhosis so here man can act both as definitive host as well as um, intermediate or accidental host or a dead end host i can say habitat it uh, inhabits the small intestine that is mostly upper jejunum and uh, the adult worm uh, measures around 2 to 3 meters length and has a scolex neck and strobula and adult worm can live up to 25 years so this is uh, tinea solium adult worm which is uh, found from a patient scolex is an armed one so here the hooklets are present okay so the scolex is round structure it is a uh, measures around 1 mm in diameter and it has four suckers and uh, it's having a conspicuous uh, rostellum okay so this rostellum is having uh, two rows of the hooklets okay so um, these uh, hooklets are small and large and alternating with each other okay neck is a short segment of 5 to 10 mm and uh, strobula it contains a less number of segments around uh, 800 to 1000 so again we can divide it into immature mature and gravid gravid measures around 12 by uh, 6 mm they are, they are grayish black in color uh, genital openings are found in the lateral aspect uh, um, at the middle of the segments <coughs> and it is alternating with the uh, right and left okay uh, of the segments okay each gravid segment contains about uh, th 30,000 to 50,000 eggs. So again, to differentiate the, the mm, segments of the uh, tinea solium and sagenita, so I have put the mm, slide again. So, and this is the elaborate differences between the the uh, tinea solium and tinea sagenita so uh, though usually the eggs as i told they cannot be differentiated from the other eggs and uh, we have to uh, do, do only the the parasitic diagnosis for identification the infective form for man uh, is the cysticercus cellulose or it's also called as tinea cyst the <coughs> larval form of the tinea solium is found in both the man and pig so generally they are small oval and they are fluid fluid filled milky white bladder like structure which measures around 3 to 15 millimeters and they are translucent so if you do a cross section the cyst wall which is around uh, 100 to 200 micrometers it's having three layers inner layer is a longitudinal or uh, the circular muscle layer mid layer is pseudo epithelial cells and the outer layer is a dentine membrane with the microvillary uh, villus projections okay 
the cyst will be filled with a clear fluid which is rich in the albumin and salt so this is the cyst circus cellulose um, cyst generally the infection is acquired by eating the improperly cooked pork and the cyst circus cellulose which is present in the muzzle of the uh, pig so they get released digested and released uh, the the protoscolex is released and the sc the scolex will evaginate it goes and attaches to the uh, mucosa and it becomes uh, adult worm in uh, 3 months and uh, life span as i told it, it can live up to the 25 years okay so <coughs> the adult worm starts laying the eggs and eggs will be released in the the into the in the stool and uh, once they are consumed uh, uh, by the uh, pig or sometimes eggs will hatch in the human intestine itself uh, to form the cystic circus cystic circus cellulose in the uh, human body itself the adult worm is not going to contribute much to the pathogenesis of the uh, infection there may be mild irritation or inflammation but uh, the cyst that is cystic circus cellulose uh, is the one which is going to give the the cause the pathology so uh, usually they are formed in the skin uh, skeletal muscles eyes or central nervous system and uh, the cyst can uh, remain um, live for few years and uh, live cyst induces the uh, less inflammatory reaction whereas once the cyst is dead uh, the inflammation will start and uh, there will be fibrosis and calcification the intestinal tenacity symptoms will be similar to that of tenia saginata uh, there may be migration of proglotids uh, proglotids and uh, are common and uh, cystic sarcosis that is uh, the muscular or subcutaneous cystic sarcosis uh, is seen uh, that is acute uh, myositis or cystic sarcosis in the muscle often associated with the neuro cystic sarcosis and uh, the ocular cystic sarcosis is seen in case of 20% of the cases which is commonly found in the the vitreous subretinal space or conjunctiva so the iritis uveitis palpebral conjunctivitis can also be found and uh, fundoscopy helps in the diagnosis of the uh, uh, this condition neurocystic sarcosis is the most serious form of the disease here around uh, 60 to 90% of the cases the involvement of the brain parenchyma is uh, more common than the extra parenchymal spaces like ventricular systems because the the cystic sarcosis will go go and uh, lodge there uh -huh. and um, the convulsions meningitis intracranial hypertension can be found and uh, prognosis is usually uh, bad so the uh, tinea solium is uh, believed to be endemic in the northern and uh, eastern states of the india and uh, uh the possible existence is found in some of the areas and some areas like uh, jammu kashmir and kerala where we can see um mm, no or very few uh, cases reservoirs both the uh humans and pigs acts as a reservoir source is usually human feces and transmission man acquires the infection by ingestion of food water contaminated with the eggs the ns2 uh, ns hand mouth uh, transmission is the um, mm, way it is transmitted and uh, sometimes reverse per peristalsis can also lead to uh, mm, auto infection laboratory diagnosis is uh, the intestinal tenacity has to be di di diagnosed based on the parasitic diagnosis we need to either uh, get the mature proglotids to or the uh, scolex of the tinea solium so then only we can uh, uh, differentiate the uh, parasite and also the cystic sarcosis cystic sarcosis 
uh, usually the serodiagnosis is done uh, detecting the anti anti circus antibodies in the serum and CSF. Okay, so ELISA is uh, less sensitive but moderately specific, and uh, the the enzyme linked immuno electrotransfer blot is a highly specific test for detection of the uh, um, parasites. Okay, serodiagnosis indicates only the exposure, and titers persist in the serum even after the um, the parasite has been eliminated. Histopathology uh, called bio biopsy will definitely help us in diagnosis. So, other modalities are we are going to do the x-ray, uh, CT scan, MRI to diagnose the condition. So, treatment is we are going to give Prasequantil which is drug of choice or Niclosamine. So, Prasequantil is given uh, uh, 50 milligram per kg in 3 divided doses for 15 days along with the corticosteroids to prevent the inflammation of the dead uh, cysts. Surgery of the ocular, ventricular or spinal cord lesions uh, may be required to uh, decrease the, the complications associated. Avoidance of the eating raw or insufficiently cooked pork is the one and inspection of the pork for cyst cirque implementation of sanitation uh, facilities and also treatment of the infected persons and improvement of the personal hygiene will um, prevent the infection. So, that is going to uh, uh, end today's uh, first session. So, I am going to continue with the next session. Uh, so, do not forget to like this video and uh, subscribe my channel and also do not forget to press the bell button. Thank you.